Hello everyone and welcome to our new video. Uh, the topic of this video is hijacking uh, shared libraries. We will show uh, how an attacker could hijack uh, a library used in a legitimate program on Linux in order to perform malicious activities. Uh, but before we uh, delve in the topic, let's introduce our lab setup. As you can see here, um, we have two machines, uh, the attacker machine running Kali Linux and the target machine running uh, Ubuntu here. I have the IP addresses uh, for both machines, so when I type I config, you can see here is the IP address of the attacker machine and when I do the same I config here is the IP address of the uh, target. So you may have noticed that both the attacker and the target are on the same network. This is uh, just for simplicity reasons. Okay, uh, now uh, let's talk about uh, shared libraries. What are shared libraries? You can think of shared libraries as a collection of data and functions designed to be used by multiple programs. Uh, typically, they have the extension SO, shared object, and they are linked dynamically at one time. In Linux uh, ecosystem, uh, shared library commonly use the ELF format. ELF stand for uh, executable and linkable format. One other thing I want to talk about is the search path for shared library. We need to understand how a program on Linux search for uh, the uh, required shared library. And actually, when, when Linux uh, application is executed, it follows a specific sequence to locate its uh, required libraries. Once uh, it finds those libraries, the search stops and the libraries are loaded. Here are the steps. Uh, first, the application checks the directory listed in its runtime library search path, which is embedded within the executable itself. Next, uh, it looks in the directories specified in the LD library path environment variable. After that, uh, the application check the runtime search path, which is similar to our path, but notice it uh, happened after the LD library path. Then the application uh, checks the directories in the uh, configuration file, which is inside the ATC folder. And finally, the search proceeds to the standard system library directory, such as the lib, lib64, user lib, etc. Okay. Um, when, when looking at how Linux search for uh, shared libraries, we can determine uh, attack vector because an attacker can manipulate this process by placing a malicious version of the libraries in an earlier uh, location. Because uh, as we saw here, there are multiple steps. One common uh, is example is using the LD library path environment uh, variable, environment variable. Uh, because this variable allows user to override the default library path and usually it's used for testing a uh, new library version. So that's also that means it's uh, give the opportunity to an attacker to place a malicious library, execute malicious code or even maybe uh, escalate privileges. Uh, 
Let's dive into a practical example. We will uh, show how to hijack the execution of a program running on our target uh, machine here. Uh, this is, but first, of course, we need to create our malicious shared library and I will call it my library. You can see the code is here. Um, okay, let's uh, explain a little bit this code. So the first uh, four lines are the standard header files. Uh, following uh, this, we have ref shell is declared with, uh, as a constructor. Uh, a constructor is a function that executes when the library is first initialized to set up all necessary code. After that, uh, we have the implementation of RefShell itself. So we set the user ID uh, to zero and we set the group ID to zero. This is to provide uh, root privilege if executed in, in a pseudo uh, context. And initially we have here, uh, we print a message. This is not necessarily just uh, for us to know that our library is called and being uh, executed. What's important uh, is here, uh, we see a netcat that is used to establish a reversal to the attacker uh, machine. So this is the ID of the attacker, as you can see here. And then there is a random port 7777 and a present at the end. So everything run in the background and a netcal shell is passed to the uh, system. So I will take this code. I will create, I'm already in uh, that directory. I will nano uh, my library.c. So I will paste this code here and I will save it. So now I have uh, the C code here. Our next step, of course, is we need to uh, compile the malicious uh, library. And we can do this simply by performing this command. So here, the dash w all that's uh, enable all the warning messages, uh, uh, dash f p i c, this is generate position independent code. This is suitable for, uh, for shared libraries. Dash C, this is uh, combine the code without linking and at the end, uh, dash O, which specify the name of our uh, output uh, file, output object here. Uh, okay, after now we create it. Uh, so if I list here, you will see I have our object here. Now we need to create a shared library. And this happened by using uh, this command. So and the difference is I'm using now the dash shared parameter to tell the GCC that we are creating a shared library from our object file. Um, and uh, I have, I, I call it libmylibrary.so. Uh, uh, so now you can see here, uh, this is our malicious uh, library. Okay, so we created our malicious library, we compile it uh, and it's ready to be used. Okay, now our next step is we need to identify a suitable application. Um, two consideration we need to keep in mind. Firstly, uh, selecting a program that the victim or the target is likely to execute with elevated privileges. And secondly, we need to ensure that the hijacking of a shared uh, library will not cause the program to crash. Because remember, when we hijack a library, this library will not be available to that program during its execution. Uh, you need to try usually multiple uh, applications, but for uh, now I will use uh, the PS command. I already know. Uh, there is a library we can use. So uh, let's identify the libraries the PS uh, command use. We can type LDD and then PS. And this all the libraries that uh, PS uses. Uh, one candidate is uh, this library, the error. Uh, 
it appeared to be a good candidate uh, because it's handle error reporting and it's likely to be loaded but not frequently called uh, during like a normal operation it might be called only if uh, an error uh, happened so now we identified uh, uh, the library we want to hijack what is our next step of course our next step is now we need to set up uh, our environment what we need two things we need to uh, to do uh, first we will rename our malicious library to the exact name of the library we want to hijack that's mean in this library we will rename it to this library so i can take uh, the command from here i paste it here and now you will see i have the exact name of the library we want to hijack second step is of course i want to export the ld library path and i want it to point to the location of our malicious library so uh, now uh, our environment is prepared we can execute uh, the ps command However, before we do that, let's come here to uh, to the attacker machine and run netcat and vp one two three four seven. We need to set up um, a netcat listener here. Okay. Now let's go to the uh, uh, target and run ps command notice what would that will happen now okay you see i got the shell here the reverse shell here and when i type id you see the username student and the user id which is the user uh, who is running the ps command here on the target machine okay now let's try again set up a netcat listener but now i will run uh, ps with the super user do ps and hit enter okay you see now ps is running but i didn't get a reverse shell why is that why when i use super user do with ps i didn't get a reverse shell actually uh, one of the challenges in uh, using LD library path environment variable is that in, in, in most modern operating system, they do not pass the user environment variable when you use uh, sudo. And actually this behavior is controlled uh, by one uh, setting in the sudo words file. What I mean by that, let's uh, super user, uh, super user to cat and I will okay so you see here we have the default environment uh, reset so uh, which is active so running a command with the sudo will not include uh, our LD library path or any actually any user defined environment variable and that's why when we uh, run PS with the super user do we didn't get a reverse shell. Is there a way to circumvent uh, this uh, setting? Actually, yes, it is. And it's uh, about creating an alias to the super user do, which uh, include our uh, LD library path. So I will take uh, this command here. So alias for the sudo and sudo uh, followed by LD library path and it points to where our malicious uh, library is. Uh, also, I should mention that uh, another way you can uh, you can set this alias in the patch RC so that will be kind of permanent but here for demonstration we will uh, set it up only in this uh, terminal so now our sodo alias is ready let's try to run super user to ps let's see what happens uh -huh. and now you see here 
we got a reversal and uh, here is the root user uh, because our alias uh, trick worked. I hope you learned something. This is uh, one example of uh, hijacking a shared library used by a legitimate application uh, on Linux. Okay, happy learning and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.